Rugby. Well, coming up in the next couple of weeks, um, well, the next couple of weeks, a specific day, actually, the 13th of December, is a um, We Benefit auction and um, kind of fun times, really, for John Stevenson, who is an award-winning journalist. Um, you might have heard about his article um, in the Metro magazine that won an award, a very important award um, for reporting, war reporting in Afghanistan. Uh, the Prime Minister came out and said that he was a dickhead or something along those lines. Not true, says Jose Barbosa from Media 7. He's actually a really good guy and we need to send him back to Afghanistan. Good morning. We certainly Jose. do. Good morning. Good How morning. are you? Yeah, very good. Actually, let's rewind um, and, and with all seriousness, um, talk about John and his work in Afghanistan and uh, he's been reporting there for years hasn't he? Yeah he's done um, tons of stuff over in the Middle East he's probably the foremost sort of um, reporter in New Zealand who's reporting on that stuff he's very experienced he goes over all the time or as often as he can afford to yeah um, he's uh, you know, reported on the 2003 invasion he's done the he's reported on the um, oh, uh, he's reported on the, you know the Israel and Hezbollah War in Lebanon. Yeah. He's been in Gaza. He's been everywhere there. So he is probably the most experienced um, reporter from New Zealand working in, in that area. He's got that knack of not um, being so much embedded with the troops that are there, but he will um, blend into the community itself, right? Mm, yeah, he, he's never, um, as far as my knowledge, really been into the whole embedded thing. So he'll go out. He's got a knack for languages and he goes out. Um, he you know, basically dresses like they do in, yeah. in, the, in the area, he goes out there and talks to the locals. Um, uh, yeah, I, I was fortunate enough to actually. I mean, the last time he went over for the um, for the Metro article to write that, I was fortunate enough to see some of the footage he took because he took a camera with him. And it's really fascinating, really fascinating stuff. He's right in the thick of it, but he's just he's not anywhere near the troops or anything like that. He's just going out talking to the people um, and yeah, you know, talking to governors on his own and doing it all as an own, which is the why we're doing this thing, really. And sort of avoiding that military spin. Yeah, totally. In the process. Yeah. Um, so this article that he did for Metro... Um, it, eyes wide shut, yeah. Yeah, it, it uh, really op- opened our eyes to what the situation with torture over there and, and the reality that our SAS may have been handing over uh, prisoners who were eventually tortured, whether they knew about that or not. Mm, yeah, it was a pretty fantastic article. Uh, I think it did two important things. It, it again showed that, you know, um, as you said, that uh, you know, the SAS troops, our SAS troops over there um, did hand over um, troops to uh, uh, prisoners of war to the local authorities, and they were then tortured. Yeah. Um, and it also showed, I think, in a wider context, just what the real reason for the SAS being there are, which is essentially to uh, carry favour with the Americans. That was the basic guts of it. I mean, yeah. we, we were sort of fed the story that you know, they're there and they're building schools. And yeah. Stuff. That does happen, but really that's been um, massaged to a point and put with some PR spin put on that. The role had changed mm. without the New Zealand public really Basically, knowing. Basically, yeah. 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 And I think those, those are the two things that I think that John's um, article really brought to the fore. And you can tell the importance of it by the, by, you know, the, the personal attacks from whoever, from the you know, defence for, force or from the Prime Minister. He, and anytime, he, he's a sort of Nicky Hager effect, anytime mm-hmm. you know, someone gets attacked, um, personally, if they attack the man, you know that someone's actually done some pretty solid stuff. Yeah, and uh, what did John say? He, he said that he had found John Stevenson not to be reliable. Yeah, yeah. Was, again, it's a Nicky Hager effect. Um, well, that's fine. <laughs> Again, it's attacking the man, but not the, the issue at, mm. at hand. Mm. Um, so that's a bit crap, quite frankly. Yeah. Um, and so, so since that that, that happened, uh, has John f- found it difficult getting either publishers or broadcasters to carry his work? I think John will say that it's always difficult. Okay. Do, do, you know, uh, John is a freelancer and independent. Um, I think more of the issue is the fact that you know to get to get the stories he has to go over the over there he has to go to the Middle East yeah and that's a really expensive um, proposition I mean there's airfares of course uh, but once you're there you have to pay for fixes these are guys on the ground who are there who help you and, and get and, uh, reporters and you know will take them where they want to go and uh, translate for them that sort of thing that's expensive um, you know finding places to stay um, you know buying people's stuff if you know. It is a really expensive proposition, mm. and quite often you find that the fee that you're given doesn't cover, you know, the cost of domain there on the ground. Now, John is, uh, you know, obviously uh, well experienced enough to try and keep it as cheap as possible, uh, but it's still difficult. So, 
and, and and that's just an indicator of what a wider problem with newsrooms, not only yeah, in New totally, Zealand but around yeah. the world, that they're not not prepared to pay to to get a journalist to really cover a story. properly. Yeah, I mean, they'll pay for the stories that come out of it. Yeah, that's for sure. But newsrooms either can't afford to, or have other priorities. Uh, quite frankly, like uh, sending their reporters to New York for a year. Um, so, <laughs> you know, uh, so a group of us who are friends of John. Um, decided that that was not a great position. John is going back to Afghanistan yeah. this year. He can't really afford to, that's the thing. So we thought, well, let's put on an event where we can raise some money for him. Cool. And, you know, so this time around it's not so difficult. I do have to actually um, point out Metro Magazine and say good on them because the Eyes Wide Shut article was only really made possible by, by Metro paying for him, right. essentially. And yeah. that they, you know, I think the the benefit of that is it was plain to see, not only for the magazine but for the wider public. Absolutely, yeah. So the event is called Gone by Christmas. Yes. And is, uh, so is he going to be spending Christmas over there? Yeah, well, that's the idea though, as well. What should we call it? Well, he's got to be gone by Christmas. Yeah. So Because he's definitely going over before Christmas. Um, so the idea is this is the evening on the 13th of December. It's going to be held at the Horse and Trap Pub, sort of near, down in Mount Eden by the Mount Eden um, uh, train station. Uh, they've been really helpful, actually. Props to them. They've uh, offered us a function room for free, yeah. which is really cool, and, nice. and donated some stuff, which is awesome. Cool. So there's going to be some fun and games to be had on the evening because we thought, let's make it fun. Um, we're going to have something called Journalism Idol, which essentially is um, a group of broadcasters who are going to be battling it out. They're going to be doing news presentation tasks <laughs> um, and, and a sort of you know a music idol kind of styles. Yeah. Uh, to be named King Juno at the end of the night. Yeah. Um, so to that extent, we've got the contestants are Mike McRoberts and Tover O'Brien from TV3. Great. Um, we've got Mikey Havoc. Yeah. And uh, comedian Rose Matafeo as well. From uh, You Live. That's right, yeah. yeah. Um, so they all be uh, battling it out. And to that extent, we've got a, uh, a panel who will be... Um, sort of uh, appraising their performance for yeah. the night. So they'll be doing things like doing pieces to camera, uh, rewriting headlines to optimise search engine results, that kind of thing. <laughs> and um, A lot know, of that goes on. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that'll be cool. That'll be really fun. Alongside that, we're going to have uh, a silent auction. So a lot of people have donated special items. Cool. Um, one of the cool items, really awesome items, I've just chucked up in the blog, which we'll talk about, is a complete set of books written by Nicky Hager. All yes. his books he's written over the years, which is pretty awesome. Um, some of the um, older books are not in print, obviously, and are quite hard to find. Yeah. And they're all signed, so there's a complete set of those books going up for silent auction. I think we all remember Seeds of Distrust. Oh, don't we? <laughs> well, does, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, sort of John Wyndham-esque, isn't it? Seeds of Distrust. Isn't um, it? Uh, so we've got that. We've got uh, Mike McRoberts has offered up a you know a tour, of, personal tour of the TV3 newsroom, and nice. you can go out and have a meal with Mike afterwards. And there are, are other items coming, um, and they're all going to go up on the blog uh, as they come in. The blog is gone by xmas.tumblr.com. Tumblr with no e, yes. Yeah. So that's where you can go to get updated about that. And there's, there'll be music. There's going to be a meat pack raffle, of course. Oh, got it's Christmas. Yeah. Far out. A bouncy castle out the front? Oh, maybe. No, now you're giving me ideas. Be awesome. <laughs> one with a slide. I think the ones. The, if you don't have a slide, yeah. that's not. You know, it's not. One of those. Um, I haven't seen one of those in years. With those bucking Broncos. Get one of those going in the corner. Oh, far out, man. <laughs> Dude, where were you? You should be. <laughs> should be the planning meeting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So there's heaps of stuff, and well, yeah, I'm still getting people together. But it should be a really awesome night. Yeah. Ticket, tickets. Uh, Twenty dollars on the door, but or, that gets that gets John over. Yeah, to look, it's a charity event, and that gets yeah. in there if we get enough people in. That's you know at least half of what he needs sort yeah. of um, piled together. You can get them on the door on the night. Um, doors open at six thirty, uh, but you can also buy them online at eventfinder.co.nz. Yeah, and that's a really good way if you can't make it, but you do want to donate money, cool. you can just buy a ticket there. But there's also a um, account. Uh, a bank account number yeah. where you can throw in some money if you like. Great. Please feel free because uh, if you care about good journalism and you want to see good journalism in this country, um, you know, John is, at the, I think, at close to, if not at the forefront of that. Absolutely. And he should be supported. Yeah. Um, and that's, yeah, that's about it. Oh, no, we've also got um, a limited edition copy of, vinyl copy of Buffalo by the Phoenix Foundation. Oh, nice. The Tom Scott cover coming. Yep. So that'll be cool. That'll all go into silent auction. And, yeah, as I say, meet pack. Um, some music 
I'm trying to nut down some musicians at the moment. I'm going for the meat pack. Yeah, man. Oh, um, that is such, such a great event, and I, I, I can't wait to um, go along there and, and check it all out. So it's all happening on the 13th of December at the Horse and Trap Pub in Mount Eden. The uh, blog there again, gone by xmas.tumblr, with, without an E at the end there, dot .com. Uh, Jose Barbosa from Media 7. Thanks uh, so much for um, coming in and telling us all about it and organising it as well. A pleasure. Opossum now. Cola Elixir. Here on the Ready Wham Breakfast Friday morning.